again everyone and welcome back to my channel my name is kaylee and today we are back on my island clover for another episode of our let's play series and in the last episode we got our campsite villager and if you want to know who that is you can go check out that video and then we placed the plot here but in today's video i figured we can go ahead and get started on our villager hunting so let's go ahead and run over to resident services to get a new plot because we should be able to place a plot the same day what we place the plot down for the campsite villager so we should be able to go ahead and go villager hunting today we also already bought from mabel so we don't have to do that again all right and this is the first time coming in here since we found a place for the campsite villager so tom Knox is going to want to talk to us about that and then he's gonna tell us that we can go ahead and place the plot and go villager hunting, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Tom Nook read our minds. All right, Mr. Nookington, please sell us a plot. I like how it's his island, but we have to buy the plot. Isn't that kind of backwards? Like, imagine having to plot, imagine having to buy a plot of land for your neighbor. That's not how this works, Tom Nook. But okay. I don't know why I have to pay for it. Shouldn't everyone on the island have to split it, at least? But, whatever. Alright, and then I'm gonna go ahead and place this right next to our campsite villager's house. Okay, so let's go ahead and place this plot down over here. And like I've said in my other videos, I like to go ahead and put them as close together as possible because I like to place all of the houses on the beach that way when we go ahead and decorate we don't have to worry about moving them we can just go ahead and focus on the um decorating i don't know why i forgot the word for decorating but let's go ahead and run to the airport as you saw a second ago i do have a pocket full of nook mile tickets so we have plenty to go through in order to hunt and then all i'm bringing is my vaulting pole all right let's go ahead and talk to orville and i know there was once a myth that if you like blushed at orville or made a reaction it would give you like better villagers on your islands and i'm just gonna let you know that that myth is completely fake because one like doing anything to orville doesn't change it but also like the game doesn't know the villagers that you want so like if you're saying oh they're gonna give me better villagers like the game doesn't even know who you want so how would they know who's a good and bad villager you know it's just random all right made it to the island and let's go see who we have i'm gonna go ahead and quickly place on the screen all the villagers that we're looking for oh it's spork I actually had him on the list that we'd made in our planning video and I didn't include him in the final list of villagers that I want but I think he was my first lazy I ever had. It was either him or Drago. I know I had one of them on my first island and then I think he was on my second island I ever had but I think he is adorable and I actually did consider him for this island but he didn't make the final cut, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back home so we can take our next ticket out. All right, we made it to the next island and I actually had to go back to my video to see who, who I actually picked to be on this island. So like I said, I'll probably have him on the bottom of the screen. <gasps> How can I say no to him? If you're like new to the channel or don't know, Cousteau is my all time favorite villager. He is like my ultimate dreamy and we got him on our second ticket but how am i supposed to say no to him little cheese frog boy oh my gosh this is actually really hard do you think we should i take him should i take him and get rid of him is that is that mean to take a villager that you know that you're gonna get rid of but like how do i how do you say no to your favorite villager if you're villager hunting honestly like look how cute he is little cheese frog i oh i'm <laughs> contemplating now do i just take him and then we can place another plot and continue our villager hunt but like how do you say no i'm gonna take him let's <laughs> this is not what was supposed to happen on this 
um, villager hunt, but honestly, if you see your favorite villager out in the wild, this is, this is your sign to take your favorite villager. I don't think he fits our island's color scheme. If you don't know our color scheme or theme of the island, definitely check out my planning video. It explains everything pretty well, I think. Um, but like, he's a frog, so he fits the theme, just not the color scheme. Watch, I'm gonna take him now and then I'm gonna end up keeping him the entire time. I could trade him out for Tad. Because in our lineup, we had Tad as one of the villagers and he's a frog. So maybe we can swap him out and keep Cousteau. And Cousteau's house doesn't really match the theme either. He has a very Japanese looking house. Um, But we... We're planning to do Happy Home Paradise on this island anyways, so I could just change his house to make it match. I didn't even, when I was picking my villagers, I didn't even stop to check what their houses actually looked like. I just picked them based on what they look like, and if you know, on my previous, on my Booville Island, I actually looked at their houses when picking them, but for this one, I had planned on doing the Happy Home Paradise expansion anyways because I wanted to do interiors and change the villager houses so look he now has a home and he has a home next to our campsite villager who you may or may not like but I love him so no Rodney hate in the chat no Rodney hate um okay let's go ahead and time travel and then I'll go ahead and get another plot and we can continue our villager hunt good morning everyone right now in clover it is 10 o'clock and today is actually the fish tourney. Um, I asked in my last video if you guys wanted to see like me fishing or catching bugs. I haven't posted that video yet, but I might film myself doing the fish tourney after this villager hunt. And then depending on <laughs> what you guys think, I might go ahead and post that video. But if everyone's like, no, I don't want to care. I don't care about you fishing. I just won't post it, but... I'll just wait until we post that video. <laughs> All right, let's quickly place this plot. And then this might actually be our last plot that we place because I, like I, I mentioned in our, where can I place this house? I think I can place it down here. Um, I mentioned in our planning video that I might only have eight villagers on the island because I kind of want to keep enough room on the island for us to have a bunch of decorated areas. So this might actually be our last plot that we place. And then um, moving forward, we just have to kick out other villagers in order to go villager hunting. Um, I might change that eventually, but I'd like to have a bunch of room on the island so the houses don't take up as much room, especially on this island because I have a lot of like larger builds planned out. Like we have our big swamp build that we want to do. I want to add a ruined church. I want to hide the museum behind the like castle walls and stuff and then have a spooky forest. So there's a lot of builds that I feel like will take up a lot of room on the island. And the less I have to incorporate villager homes into those builds might be better or because I don't think I'll actually decorate around Nook's Cranny or Able Sisters for this island. I know I was kind of debating if I was going to do Nook's Cranny because I'm planning to keep it in the small version. So it would be a little easier to decorate around. But if I have a lot of these larger builds that take up a lot of room, I might not have enough room for them actually. Um, it's Patty. Um, and we also have a fossil that I'm gonna steal. Oh, I don't have a- never mind. I don't have a shovel. I'm not gonna take it. Um, yeah, but I think keeping it to eight villagers will be nice because then we have a lot of room to decorate around. And I've never kept it to only eight villagers on my island, Saffron. I actually planned to only do eight villagers, but then I got Poppy, the horse in my campsite. And I love him so much that I decided to expand to do um, nine villagers. So I only had nine villagers on that island instead of like the max of ten. So maybe we can do eight on this island. And then my other island, Booville, that I'm working on right now has 16 total houses. And I think I might actually have to cut that back to 15 
because I have the 10 villager homes and then I have six um, like character homes, like the human homes. And I've been trying to work out where I want them all to go. And I feel like honestly, I'm kind of running out of room on that island. So I might actually get rid of one of the houses on that island, one of the human houses, because I think you can just remove them from an island if you like kick them out. And uh, who is this? Celia? I think that's her name. Yeah, she's not one that I want. But I think I want to kick out one of the human villagers because I'm just running out of room on the island. I still have to build the um, two larger builds that we have left are the fall festival, which I really want to include on this island because I have an idea in my head right now of what I want it to look like. And then we have the pumpkin patch. And I talked about in one of my videos on one of my Booville videos that I was planning to build it around the museum and making the museum kind of like a church because I feel like um, all the like pumpkin patches I went to growing up were like in front of like a church for some reason. I don't know if it was like run by the church. I don't really go to church so we it wasn't like a church we went to. We would just go to the pumpkin patch and it happened to be outside of a church. So I figured like we could definitely have a museum pumpkin patch and then it also incorporates all of the in-game buildings because the video I put out today actually when I'm filming this um, was for the Nooks, Cranny, and Able Sisters build on that island. So if we do Nooks and Ables, we already did. And then if we include the museum, that's including all of the in-game buildings. And then plus 16 houses, that takes up a, a lot of space on an island. And I don't usually, oh my God, it's Tasha. If you watch my planning video, I actually talked about having Tasha, but I said no because I thought she was a little too blue. And I felt like that didn't really go with our color scheme that much. So I actually removed her from the list. But I feel like we're getting a lot of good villagers. We got Spork, who was on our list. And then Kusto, who's just my favorite. And then Tasha, who was also on the list. So not horrible villagers, just not exactly the ones that we want. But talking about the video that came out today for Booville, in that video, I talked about... I'm currently working on two fall islands because I have this one which is kind of like Halloween inspired and then Booville is obviously like a very fall Halloween city core island so one these two islands are very different and both fall but I also have like one more idea for a fall island and I'm contemplating whether I want to start that island. I feel like I'm not really running out of time but it's a little later than what I would want to start another island but I mentioned in that video that I might keep it as a offline island because I don't know making content for three islands might be a whole lot I said I could probably work on it off screen and then show the island once it's done like show the dream address for it but let me know if you want to see me work on that island um, or if you're just like fine with seeing the final product of it or if it's something that you'd rather see like my process for creating it. it would more be similar. It's almost like a complete mix of these two islands I'm working on because Clover is more natural and organically like pathed and everything. Well, at least that's the plan for this island. We haven't really started working on it yet. And then it's kind of like Booville because it will be very Halloween themed and fall. So I haven't even mentioned the theme for this island. This theme that I'm thinking of is having a giant like fall themed farm island. And I was recently watching Sparksby's 14 day challenge from last year. And she made a fall island that was fall farm island and I feel like I just took so much like inspiration from that one and I kind of want to build one on my own so I don't know if I want to start that island now and I don't know if I'd want to turn it into like a 14 day challenge kind of island or if it's just an island that I want to do without like putting a challenge behind it but I have also been thinking of somehow doing a challenge for myself because I've seen a lot of creators doing challenges 
for their islands. Like, she did a 14-day challenge where she still used, like, treasure islands everything, so it wasn't, like, an offline island. She also used, like, custom paths and all that stuff from the Abel's app. I don't remember what it's called, but the design app. And then I've seen people doing, like, Froggy Crossing did her 30-day no online challenge, and then she did her 30-day no item challenge, which is crazy to me because... I kind of feel like I could do that with a very natural island, but that's a large challenge. And I know someone else, I think it's, I can't remember the name of the channel, but I'll pop it up on the screen right now if I can find it in a little bit. But all of them have been doing like challenges on their islands. And I don't know if that's something I want to do because I feel like I could get burnt out on it, especially like if I'm playing every day for 30 days and I give myself a, a clock. I don't know if that would stress me out too much and maybe give me some burnout when that's definitely something that I'm trying to stay away from. I already took like two months off of playing this game because I did get burnt out when I was trying to complete rubble. And I think that's just because I was kind of ready to be done with Rubble. I had burned, I had been working on it for a while and I feel like at the very end of an island, I feel like I'm just like ready to move on to something. And I had, I was also working on Inkblot at the time I was working on Rubble and that island really burnt me out because if you didn't know, Inkblot was a black and white only island. Well, black, white, and gray, like grayscale island. And it was like a kid core city island and I made some of my own codes for that island because there weren't- Oh, it's Graham! I just talked about him in the last video because I think he's so cute. Definitely not for this island, but I think he's adorable. I just like- like a lot of the characters that people don't like, apparently. Um, but yeah, the island burnt me out because you could only use such few numbers of items because it had to be on grayscale and then it was also like a kid core city. So trying to think of ways to make kid core, which is obviously very fun, bright, uses a lot of color, and then 100% changing that into black and white. I had to rely on making like cool ideas for it and then changing it into black and white. And like all of the buildings I had to make my own codes for and that took a while. Um, and then Kid Core, not Kid Core, I love Kid Core and I could definitely see myself doing a Kid Core Island in the future, making it like very colorful. But that city that I was making was different from my Booville city because my Booville city is mainly focused on like interesting pathing and a lot of like homes and smaller builds while this island was more focused on like stores and everything. So like I had a gas station, a post office, a costume store, and I was planning initially to do Happy Home Paradise for that island and do all the home interiors, but I couldn't even finish like the actual builds on the island because I had burnt myself out so much. Um, so I couldn't even finish the island, let alone do interiors when interiors are something that I already don't like because I don't think I'm very good at it and I just don't have that much fun doing it. So I feel like just pushing myself when I was already feeling burnt out to do something that I didn't enjoy, just, it's just not good for your mental health. And if it's something that you're not that interested in, I don't see why you need to do it. So I kind of just put that island on the back burner. It's still on the switch, so I haven't deleted it. I know a few people have asked me about it in the comments. It's still up and running. Um, it's on my husband's switch. Um, so I could definitely still work on it. I don't know if I will. I would love to finish the dream address for that island just so I could say like, I made this whole black and white kid core island and I finished it and here's the dream address just to be like proud that I finished an island with like such a hard theme and so you guys could tour it and because that's always fun touring other people's islands but I just don't think I want to continue that island really. I might if I get a random burst of inspiration I might go back to it but I honestly if you're one of the people that asked me about that island and I told you I might work on it I just wouldn't hold your breath over it because um I probably won't go back to it honestly but like I said if I get a random like burst of 
inspiration, we can definitely go back to that island and I'll even make content about it still if I find the inspiration for it. But anyways, let me know if you would be interested in seeing that farm fall island. Um, I would want it to be very natural and kind of like overgrown with lots of like foresty areas and I'd want it to be in the time zone that Booville is in. So lots of the mixed color trees and the falling leaves that you get. Um, on that island, I think I'm on November 16th, so I'd probably go around the same date on that island. Um, but let me know if you'd like to see that island and if you'd like to see me do like a 30 day or 14 day challenge. It will definitely be something that I have to work on here and there and then the whole process of the video coming out would be in the 30 days or 40 days. I don't think I want to hold myself like you have to play it every day. Um, for 30 days, like if I want to take a day off, like I just won't count that day if that makes sense. Um, I don't want to like freak myself too much out because most of those creators that do that challenge like Froggy Crossing and um, Sparksby, I think content creation is their whole job and you will probably obviously know that content creation is not my only job and I work a full nine to five job and do this like on the side just as like a hobby. So I definitely don't have all the time in the day to just focus on Animal Crossing because I don't know how long they would play it at a time. And I know Sparksby in her videos, she was like staying up like super late to finish the island. And that is just crazy to me. So I think if I were to do a challenge island, I would probably go with 30 days rather than 14. And I don't know if I'd want to do one where it's offline because I like one. I have a modded switch so I could just mod my items. So it would probably just be a series of start to finish in a short time span of me completing an island. Um, but I also love using custom paths. And I feel like if I forced myself to make an island where I had to create all the custom codes, I probably wouldn't like it as much just because I'm not like the best creator of custom codes. I know I have a video out there where I made like a dirt path and a boardwalk and codes like that, but they're not like the best codes. And I definitely love like specific codes. So yeah, I probably wouldn't do like an offline island. I would just do like a time challenge basically. Like you have to complete it within this time frame. But like I said, let me know in the comments if that is something that you would be interested in seeing me doing. And if I get enough people saying they'd be interested, I could definitely give it a shot. Um, even if it's just the island without a challenge or if you do want to see a challenge island of some sort. Um, yeah, just let me know. Um, but something else that has been on my mind recently is I mentioned it in a video. I don't remember which one or when I mentioned it. But I am getting ready to go on an Alaskan cruise. And this vacation has been on my bucket list for like ever. I basically had to like bribe my husband into letting us go. And I've been asking him for like years because we were supposed to go back in like 2019, I think. We were supposed to go on an Alaskan cruise with my family and my grandmas. And then I think like an earthquake happened or something and it kind of ruined the ports at the time. They were like under construction. So instead we did a New England cruise where it went to like Canada and um, Rhode Island and Maine. Um, and that one was super fun, but that's definitely not the same as like an Alaskan cruise because like it's so much easier to go to Maine than it is to go to Alaska and it just doesn't have the same wow factor, I guess. But this is a trip that I have been wanting to go on for years and I am so excited to go. My parents went on one last year, no, the year before last year and they showed us pictures of it and seeing like the glaciers and all the snow and everything. It's just like so beautiful, especially for someone who lives 
in the south that doesn't get to experience snow. As you might know, I live in Florida, so year round it's basically summer in Florida. I think the like lowest it gets is like the 50s, so it definitely doesn't rain here. It gets a little colder in like northern Florida, but I live in central Florida, so it definitely does not get that cold here, and I've never seen the snow or anything. I remember seeing like, pictures of me in the snow, like making a small snowman, but I was probably like three at the time, so I don't have like any memory of it. And I've seen like ice when we go up north, but because I have family that lives in like Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and like as a kid, we would go up there to see them every once in a while. Um, and if it was in the winter, it was never snowing when we went up there. It was all, always just like cold and icy, like there'd be ice on the ground, but never like falling snow or inches of snow on the ground or anything. And I know some people in my comments were surprised to hear that I've never seen snow because if you live somewhere like up north, like snow is just something that you're like so used to. And it's kind of like when I hear about people that have never gone to the beach, like going to the beach used to be like a weekly like a weekly thing when I was growing up. My dad would take me and my sister to the beach like every weekend um, during the summer when we were on break. So hearing people that haven't been to the beach ever is like, you've never been to the beach, but like the beach is always there. So it's kind of like the same thing, I guess. But one thing that has been in on my mind, I guess, about this vacation, because it's only like, 22 days away or something um which is super exciting well it's like 22 days from the flight and then like 23 days from the actual cruise itself because we have to fly out to seattle which in itself is like a whole day worth of flying because i think it's like six hours so that is definitely like the longest flight i've been on i've been to california for our honeymoon and that was like a five and a half hour flight but this flight to seattle is slightly longer because we have to go like sideways and north like more north because florida to california is kind of just almost sideways like a little north but not that much um so that will be the longest flight i've ever been on which takes up a good portion of the day it is nice though that the time change kind of works in our favor because we leave like pretty early in the morning and then it's like a six hour flight but because of the time change it's really only like three hours lost like if our flight is at like nine or something we get there at like noon um so like i guess it's it's just like a long flight but we get there at a decent time so it doesn't feel like you lost a whole day but also after being on a flight for six hours you don't really want to go around and explore we definitely will um i want to go to pike's place the market or pike's market something like that and <laughs> how cheesy it sounds i really want to go to the first ever starbucks because i'm a starbucks girl and I'd love to see the first Starbucks. That sounds so cheesy and it's probably such a tourist trap. But I think they have like a whole like coffee bean like thing to see when you're there. Like I think I've seen pictures and it's like almost like a factory. They have like a bunch of pipes and stuff. I don't know <laughs> how to explain it. But I definitely want to go to uh, the uh, Starbucks and then Pike's Place and then maybe even the Space Needle if we have enough time. Again, these are such like touristy destinations, but I'm a tourist. What do you expect from me? Like, I'm gonna want to see the cool things going to a new place. Um, but then our cruise is the next day, so I don't also... We're gonna be three hours behind, so even if it's like 6 p.m. there, it's gonna be like 9 for us, which is like pretty late. So I know we have to get used to the time when going there, but I don't want to overexert myself on the first day. So, yeah, but the reason I brought this up is because I've been ordering clothes like crazy for this trip because I think the high in Alaska when we're going is like 50 and like I said, 50 is like the lowest it gets here and it probably gets that low like three days of the year. So I have like no actual like winter clothes, plus 
I feel like I shift in weight a lot more than a lot of people do. Like, I'll go, like, pretty low and then pretty high. And right now I'm, like, in the higher phase of my weight life. And so I don't have a whole lot of winter clothes to begin with. And then I also don't have a lot of winter clothes that fit me even. So I've been ordering, like, long sleeve shirts, puffer jackets, uh, flannel shirts to, like, layer. Because what I've heard is, like, the best for cold climates is to layer because especially in Alaska it can like change 40 degrees in a single day like out in the sun it can be like a high of 50 and then at night it can be like down to 10 degrees which is crazy to me because I feel like we don't shift that much in Florida at all it's usually like a shift of maybe like 10 degrees all day especially in the summer oh it's Spike I love him Again, I want him for my Grunge Graffiti Island. I feel like every villager I talk about, I just talk about that island, but it's an island I've always wanted to do, and I have a lot of my villagers picked out for that island already. I quickly had to step away to throw my cat out because my cat Gizmo always likes to uh, jump up on my desk, and uh, he's like stepping on my keyboard and like closing things, and I was scared he was going to uh, stop the recording of this video. So. That's lovely, thank you so much Gizmo for that interruption. But I was talking about my winter clothes. So I've been ordering a bunch of clothes like crazy online and they've all been been delivered. And you also have to have like semi-formal attire because for dinners, we have two of our fancier dinners and I want to look nice. I don't want to like show up wearing sweatpants to these. And some of the restaurants actually have like a dress code of some sort. So, definitely don't want to get kicked out of a re Oh my god. I feel like this is a reenactment of me finding truffles. And chop- No one likes chops, right? No one likes him. I had a couple people in my comments tell me that they liked truffles, which... First of all, don't relate. Don't like her. But chops? I feel like there has to be more chops haters than there are truffle haters. Because look at him. Horrendous. Okay, I'm leaving. But yeah, I've been <laughs> I've been buying a lot of clothes. Um, so winter clothes and then nicer dresses, even if it's just like a nicer sundress, because I want to be prepared for all of these. And for our excursions for this trip, I know we're going whale watching one day, and that's gonna be like on a boat, so there won't be like a whole lot of like hiking or anything. And then another day, we're going on a uh, train, the White Passage or something like that. It's a train ride around um, one of the cities in Alaska. And I'm super excited for that one. But again, it's not really a very physically demanding uh, excursion. I couldn't think of that word again. Excursion. So I don't know if I need like hiking boots or anything just to like walk around Alaska. We also are planning in Juneau. So the first stop we go to is Juneau and that's where we're doing the whale watching. And then after that we're planning to go to this restaurant called like Tracy's Crab Shack or something. It's like right off the um, docks where the cruise ships dock. And they have some- <gasps> Oh is that Anka? I thought it was Kiki. Me gasping like I just won the lottery. I thought- I saw the blue ears and I thought it was Kiki. Dang it. Okay. Well, I do like Anka. I had her on my kid core jungle island in like the deserty area and she worked really well there so I do like her a lot. Um, but I completely lost my train of thought there. Um, we're going to a place called Tracy's Crab Shack and they have like these giant crab legs. And I guess they get them off of the ships that are from the show The Deadliest Catch. Which, by the way, did anyone else's mom have, like, a strange addiction to that show? My mom, I swear, knows everything about the people on The Deadliest Catch. She used to watch that show nonstop. And when they went to Alaska last year, she went to that place and was like geeking out because they have a bunch of like the deadliest catch memorabilia up on the wall and everything so she was like super excited at the thought of eating crab from one of the crab boats in the show 
I don't remember the names of the boats, but I used to watch it with her, so she was like nerding out about the show altogether. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like what I've been thinking about. Um, having to buy a bunch of clothes. I've gotten some recently and been trying them on everything. And now I think I have way too many sweatshirts because I also have been buying sweatshirts from TikTok shop. TikTok gets me every time. <laughs> I've been buying sweatshirts from there. So I got a pickle sweatshirt because I haven't really talked about this on the channel, but I've been going through a little bit of some like medical things behind the scenes and that's part of the reason I also took a break from content creation but I have symptoms that correlate with this with the with a medical condition called POTS which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome so basically if I like bend over to grab something and stand up or if I go from sitting to standing or laying to standing my heart rate spikes and I get like super dizzy and one of the treatments for it because there's not really like a cure for it there's just ways to try to like manage it conservatively um because i think it's a relatively newer diagnosed condition altogether like i don't think it's been something that a lot of doctors have like formal training on or anything um but one of the ways they try to manage that condition is increasing salt because the thought behind it is salt will also increase your blood pressure slightly. So if you have more salt, your blood pressure is higher because what happens is when you're going from position changing, your, um, oh, there's Sly. He could also work, but not the color scheme. So the thought is if you bend over your, and stand up, your blood pressure is going low and so to compensate your heart rate is beating faster and you could get dizzy during that time um so it's normal to see a heart rate increase with like hypotension when you're changing positions um so increasing your salt and fluid intake is something that they use to conservatively treat the condition and one of like the saltiest foods that a lot of people with this condition like are pickles <laughs> so i sh saw a pickle shirt on tiktok shop and they got me i bought that pickle sweatshirt and i think it's like the funniest thing to have like just a sweatshirt with a bunch of pickle jars on it if i have a picture of it i'll put it on the screen now for you but i think it's super cute and it's kind of like an inside joke for me, like having pickles, like I feel like if you saw someone wearing a pickle shirt, you'd just be like, wow, that person really likes pickles. But to me, it's like a little bit more because it's like, oh, you're going through this and it's a way to cope with humor, I guess. And then the other day I bought on TikTok shop again, there was this sale on these sweatshirts that are, oh, it's Hornsby. He is such a little baby. Look how cute he is definitely not for this island but i do love hornsby um anyways on tiktok shop they had a sale on a pack of three sweatshirts and they're like halloween related ones and i wanted to get a certain collection that had like two halloween halloween town reference shirts and the other one was like dead before coffee or something like that and i just thought that was funny because i'm like a coffee fiend um but I actually got the wrong ones. I clicked, they had like multiple options and I chose the wrong option. So when they showed up, I was like, this is not what I wanted. And so I'm in the process of returning those. So I don't know if I should buy the correct ones again, or if I should just, I guess, suck it up that I got the wrong ones and keep them, or if I should just return them. They're just not my style at all. They're like, I guess like cheesy little saying like drink up witches which I think is cute it's just not something that I would want to wear out I know some people that's like definitely your style and that's great I'm just not like a big drinker so it doesn't make that much sense for me to wear a sweatshirt like that so I think I'm gonna return them for sure I just don't know oh it's opal again opal was actually on my list too but I just figured you don't really see elephants in forests or swamps so i said no to her um but yeah i'm definitely gonna return them i just don't know if i should buy 
my the ones that I actually wanted again because like I said I got the wrong pack so I don't know if I should just go through and buy them again because I already have a whole bunch of sweatshirts now because I've been buying clothes like crazy for this trip and we're trying to do it as carry on only because one we've never checked a bag so I don't even know how that works and I think you have to pay for them as well and it's just easier to just do carry-ons because you just get off the boat off the plane and you can just leave right away instead of having to go and find your baggage and all of that stuff so I think we're gonna do carry-on only but I <laughs> I tried packing my suitcase the other day after work after I was getting all of these things delivered and it's gonna be a tight squeeze especially because we're leaving from Florida which is hot and then going to Seattle and I don't know how cold it's gonna be in Seattle so like, it's not like we're wearing jackets or anything here now so we have to pack away all of our like long sleeves but we have like a puffer a rain jacket uh, a bunch of pants a bunch of long sleeve shirts because like I said before it's good to like layer up and everything so I have to fit all of those layers in a single suitcase which is gonna be a big struggle so if you have any packing suggestions or if you've been to Alaska and you're like you need to bring this or this or this or don't bring this because you won't use it definitely leave them in the description in the comment section and help a girl out because I'm just going off of what people say like in YouTube videos I've been looking up like what to bring to Alaska and stuff like that and I've also gone down the rabbit hole on TikTok of people going to Alaska and all that stuff so yeah, but speaking of TikTok shop, does anyone else use TikTok like religiously? I feel like all of my free time, I'm like scrolling through TikTok and I'm just very impressionable. So I get a lot of things for like TikTok shop and I get like a lot of clothing ones and I'm not like the biggest fan of buying clothes online, even though I just talked like for 30 minutes about buying clothes online, but I feel like I'm pretty interestingly proportioned as a human so I feel like a lot of clothes just don't fit me the way that they look on certain people um so when I buy clothes I like to buy them in person because things just don't fit right and but one thing I was definitely influenced to buy was sugar-free chamoy and I know a lot of people love chamoy and they love tahine I love tahine I've never had chamoy though but after seeing like, I swear, like a hundred videos on this sugar-free chamoy, I <laughs> went ahead and bought it, which is so random because like you're buying something that you, you don't even know if you like, and then you're buying off of TikTok, which in of itself is like a little sketchy, I guess, because of course people are going to say it's good so they can sell more items, but I swear I had seen so many people saying they liked it so after i watched this one person who doesn't even like chamoy well at least they said they didn't like chamoy and then they were trying this sugar free option they were like oh it's so good and they like ate like a whole plate with it so i was like fine i'll try it so i just ordered it so i'm waiting for it to get here but let me know do you like chamoy which is it's just like such a random thing like i don't even really know what it's supposed to taste like Oh, look, it's Astrid. Again, Grunge Graffiti Island. I want you there, not on this island. Why is everyone coming on this island for that island? Let's get out of here, Wilbur. All right, we made it to another island. And something I think is pretty, pretty funny about us, like, villager hunting is, like I said, I have a uh, spicy switch. So I can just... <gasps> okay, this... This game is just punking me now. If you know, Ruby is like one of my favorite villagers in the game. And honestly, you could see a Ruby on a witchy island. Like she's kind of spooky looking, but so all the villagers, you can see them on the bottom of the screen. Hopefully if I do that in editing, <laughs> um, I have Cole on this list and I have Coco on this list as our bunny villagers. And all of the other villagers are like green or black or dark colored, but I feel like, I feel like Ruby could fit. Now, I'm just stretching it now. Now I'm just finding cute villagers that I want on my island. But I think, oh, should I take her? 
with her like red eyes i feel like she's pretty witchy and you always find you can find an albino bunny in a dark and swampy area i don't know i just really love her i'm just now ignoring all of the villagers i have set up and i'm just going for her okay i i did it with Cousteau. i have to do it with ruby she's like my third favorite villager and we're gonna invite her and then Maybe I will increase it to 10 villagers so I can just have Kusto and Ruby and then everyone else will be on the list. On the actual list that I spent time making and I'm just going against past self and picking all the villagers I just love. But we were talking about Inkblot earlier and she's actually a villager I had on Inkblot because obviously she's white and she had a whole mini golf course to herself. I was really proud of that video and I feel like it didn't get enough love so I'm gonna link it up in the top corner for you. If you haven't seen it definitely check it out. I was so proud of that build. I made a whole mini golf course that was space themed because if you didn't know Ruby is a space bunny and she's so cute. Her house is basically like the moon where she has like a rover and all this stuff and so I made her a full golf course because I gave all my villagers like little jobs and everything. So I don't know if you want to call this villager hunt successful because we didn't really find any of the villagers that we were looking for, but I found two of my favorite villagers and I feel like that's what counts. So I think it was successful, but I'm going to end the video here Let's go ahead and stand in front of the sign. That is the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. Before you leave, make sure to give the video a like, comment, and to subscribe to the channel. If you watch to the end, let me know your thoughts on Kusto and Ruby, but be careful because they're some of my favorite villagers, so I will hear no slander of them. Um, but I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends!